Moses is 80 years old and Aaron is 83 when they go to Pharaoh with their message, let my people go. Uh, but in Exodus chapter 5, Pharaoh is singularly unimpressed. Verse 2, Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. Who is this Lord? You know, he says, I've heard of Ra and Ammon and Osiris and Isis and Seth and Nephthys. These gods I know. Who is this Yahweh, this Lord? Pharaoh has no time for weak men preaching a weak message about an unknown God. Baffled and angry, he then turns up the heat on the Israelites. Verse 6, that same day Pharaoh gave this order to the slave drivers and overseers in charge of the people. You are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw, but require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't, recru don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That is why they are crying out, let us go and sacrifice to our God. Make the work harder for the people so that they keep working and pay no attention to lies. This is what happens when you meet earthly power with the weakness of preaching. In the end, the earthly power comes tumbling down, but in the short term, the people of God suffer more. Yet as we read Exodus 5 about their burdens, this is not just a history lesson for us. This is our story. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 34, Whoever sins is a slave of sin. We were born into a spiritual Egypt, a slavery to sin and Satan and self. And here is how it is described in, in verse 4. It speaks of, of labor and work. In verse 6, it talks about slave drivers. Literally, it's the word taskmasters, which is our phrase for today. We go from task to task to task, and the world is our slave driver. God might be a father, but the world is a taskmaster. And verse 8 is the rhythm of its drum. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That's why they are cr crying out. Make the word work harder for them, says verse 9, so that they keep on working. Verse 11, your work will not be reduced at all. This is the treadmill of the world, the flesh, and the devil. We're enslaved to sin, working harder and harder, trying to prove ourselves and getting less and less recognition. Even as we do more and more, we are branded as lazy. Our slavery to sin and Satan is just like this. We chase after moving targets and we never get the verdict that we're looking for. The world is a place of taskmasters. But the Lord Jesus is different. He does not demand our labor. He buys our freedom. In Exodus 6 from verse 6, he speaks comfort to the Israelites in the midst of their burdens. As I read this, cling on to these seven promises, seven I wills, which the Lord Jesus gives to those who are suffering and enslaved. Through his redemption, Jesus speaks these words to you today. Exodus 6 from verse 6. I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched harm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord.